The sky was dark on the day every pony in town attended the funeral of the two fillies, Sweetie Belle and Scootaloo. It was a sad day for the whole town, but there was no pony sadder than Apple Bloom. Apple Bloom had just lost both of her best friends, both who were victim to horrible, gruesome deaths. Sweetie Belle had been nailed to a tree, and a stick had been shoved through her head, and Scootaloo had been stabbed repeatedly to death. The two coffins were levitated down the street past the crowds of silent, sad ponies. They were open coffins, allowing the view of the bodies inside. They had been gently cleaned of blood, and expert doctors had sewn their wounds back together, making it nearly impossible to tell that they had once been horribly mutilated. The two fillies' bodies had also been placed in their coffins in a position so that they could be seen as just sleeping. Several ponies, including one pony with rather curious golden eyes, stepped closer to get a better view of the bodies as they passed. Applejack, Granny Smith, and Pinky, with two royal guards on either side of them, were also at the funeral. Applejack and Pinky being the only two left out of the six friends. Three were dead, and one was an insane psychopath, who had already killed several ponies, including the two fillies, Hence, the presence of the guards. Other than the royal guards, Princess Celestia, Applejack, and Pinkie Pie, no pony thought the situation could have been any worse. But in reality, it was. The town still didn't know about the other murders, including the murder of Princess Twilight Sparkle. But it wouldn't be long before the ponies began to suspect something. The official report for the two fillies' deaths was, Death by Misadventure. But although the other ponies in the town knew little about the situation, it was doubtful that all of them actually believed the report, because of the royal guards who now patrolled the whole town, day and night. Several hours later, the funeral was over, the bodies burned in the cemetery. Apple Bloom had cried silently a lot during that, and Applejack's comforting hooves around her didn't seem to help at all. Applejack and Pinky cried too, not just for the fillies, but also for their friends that had been killed. As Applejack, Granny Smith, Pinky, and Apple Bloom accompanied the two royal guards, trotted for Sweet Apple Acres, they noticed more Pegasus ponies moving more dark storm clouds above the skies in Ponyville after the funeral. It was probably scheduled, Applejack thought, but it was ironic that the weather today was going to reflect the mood of how they felt. The group of five were all headed to the house at Sweet Apple Acres, just as the first of many raindrops began to fall. A royal guard inside the house opened the door for them as they reached the porch, and they went inside. When the five walked into the living room, they could hear the rain start to come down harder, thumping on the roof of the house loudly. Apple Bloom headed straight for the stairs to her room, and the royal guards moved into a corner of the room, trying not to be a disturbance. And Applejack went over to the couch, which she flung herself upon. Next, Granny Smith sat in her chair, and after crying a bit more, she quickly fell asleep. Applejack realized her big brother was nowhere in sight. Big Mast must still be outside, coming back from the funeral. He went, but he didn't stand with us. Applejack reasoned with herself. She knew he'd be in in a few minutes. Looking outside, she saw that it was now nearly as dark as night, and the rain had begun to come down in sheets. Despite the fact that the storm had only started five minutes ago, Applejack heard hoof steps rapidly coming from the stairs, and she turned towards the noise, along with the royal guards, but it was only Apple Bloom, who went over and joined Applejack on the couch. Sis, I'm scared, Apple Bloom said in a small voice. And shouldn't Big Mac be in by now? I'm sure he's coming, Applejack said, but her voice sounded unsure, even to her own ears. Rainbow Dash, shivering and cold, flew crazily through the rain and wind, looking for shelter. Her fur was completely soaked, and all the blood she had gotten on herself several days before was all washed away. Despite the dark and heavy rain, the Pegasus kept searching, and finally spotted an old shack on the ground below, which she instantly flew for. Stepping inside the shack, she instantly felt the rain stop pounding on herself, and heard it patter on the roof instead. It was dark inside the small shack with the only light coming from the doorway, and the whole shack smelled of moldy, damp wood. But it didn't matter. 
Rainbow Dash laid down near the center of the shack and tried to sleep, but she couldn't. When she looked up again, she was horrified, but not surprised to see the familiar faces standing in front of her, or what was left of them. Rarity was in the front, and she advanced on Rainbow Dash as the Pegasus scrambled up in terror. Rarity's once white coat was now rotting and streaked with blood. A hatchet wound in her stomach was spilling what was left of her putrid insides. The slash in her throat was wide and gaping, allowing an unattractive view of the inside of her neck. This is for Twilight. The dead unicorn snarled in a throaty voice and attacked. Rainbow Dash kicked at Rarity, but, and she was, went sprawling across the floor. But Flutterjaw was right there to take her place. Her mutilated head spilling brains, her once bright yellow coat now dirty and matted with blood. The others are going to kill you for what you did, Rainbow. Fluttershy said in a chillingly calm voice, and flew at Rainbow, who managed to knock the dead Pegasus down, not even aware that she was screaming at the top of her lungs as she did so. As Rainbow backed away from Rarity and Fluttershy, who were getting up again, Twilight herself stepped forward, the dead Olicorn's body rotting away, the eye that had been stabbed with a knife now running down her face. She snarled at Rainbow and flew right at her, and Rainbow covered her head, closed her eyes, and screamed and screamed until she could scream no more. After what seemed like hours, she looked up again, right as lightning flashed. She was all alone in the shack, the horrible visions finally gone. Rainbow Dash began laughing hysterically, but it was no more than a whisper of a sound, as her throat was raw from screaming. She tasted blood in her mouth. After a few minutes, Rainbow Dash closed her eyes, trying to sleep. But the nightmares haunted her, stalking to the wasteland that had once been her mind. It had scared everyone when Big Mac burst through the front doors of the house. Soaking wet with rain, and the royal guards near the door had managed to turn his head in time, so that instead the bolt of energy from his horn blew a blowing Big Mac's head off. It missed him by inches, flying out the door and into the rain. Big Mac! Where have you been? Applejack said angrily, running over to him while the guard who had nearly hit him stuttered endlessly apologies, while they were largely ignored. I had to finish a few trees, Big Mac said calmly. Applejack clapped a hoof to her face in frustration. So that's why you're inside so late? You get back from a funeral, seeing that it's starting to rain, and you go finish your work? Yep. Big Mac... I thought... I thought you'd been... Applejack couldn't finish the sentence, and instead hugged her brother, silently thanking Celestia that he was alright. When she stepped away from him, she led him to the living room and spoke. Well, we're all here now. We're all safe. With those words, they all went back to remembering their dead friends. Princess Celestia had arrived back in Canterlot, and as soon as she got to the castle, she stopped to levitate a rather large box in the air. Done with that, she proceeded to go down to the furthest depths of the castle, so deep that few in all of Equestria knew that this part of the castle existed. As she continued down, she felt her magic dampening slightly. The spell that had cast on this place to keep ponies from using magic or flying was strong, but being the one who had cast the spell, she mostly had power over it. Nevertheless, levitating the box was a bit more than a struggle. Finally, Celestia made it to a small wooden door. While she pushed open and walked inside, slightly out of breath, but she instantly felt her magic return to her. Looking around, she saw the large, familiar, uh, shadowy room, with a familiar giant machine with tubes running from it, with the familiar buttons on it. She saw the shelf against the far right wall that was stacked from floor to ceiling with books on magic and magic potions. Then she saw the familiar five unicorns dressed in black coats and gas masks, making their identity impossible to determine. Even their horns were covered, wrapped in black cloth. One of these uni unicorns walked over to Princess Celestia. Yes, Princess? he asked. Celestia sighed and gently set the box down in front of her. Shadow, I know this room was created for many things, but now... I'm going to ask you to do the hardest thing yet. And what would that be, Princess? Shadow asked cautiously. 
Celestia's horn glowed, and the lid of the box opened. I... I need you to fix this. Shadow stepped forward and looked inside the box, and although it was impossible to see his expression on his face, Celestia heard it in his voice. But, princess, how? Uh, are you sure? Celestia closed her eyes and spoke. I'm sorry I have to ask you to do this, but Twilight Sparkle and her friends were never supposed to die. With them gone, all of Equestria is in great danger. I really don't want to ask you to do this, but I must. So I repeat, can you fix this? Oh, and one more thing. I'll be bringing the other two soon. Shadow contemplated that for a moment, looking at the dead purple holocorn inside of the box. After a moment, he sighed. All right, princess. I'll see what I can do. While all this was happening, an angry, golden-eyed unicorn was addressing four of his friends inside of his house. If Princess Celestia thinks she can hide what's going on from us, she's sadly mistaken. The unicorn with the golden eyes addressed his four friends, also unicorns. Something is going on, and we aren't being told what. Two ponies, killed. Several others, missing. Royal Guard patrolling our town day and night. Stuff like this doesn't just happen in Ponyville. He narrowed his eyes, silently daring his friends to challenge what he said. Well, what do you think it is? One of his friends asked. If you want my opinion, the Gold Knight Unicorn said. I think what those ponies, that they didn't die of misadventure. No, no. Something killed them. Why do you think that? Another one of his friends asked. The golden eyed pony clapped his hoof in frustration. First of all, why else would there be royal guards patrolling the town? And second of all, did you look and see what those two fillies' bodies at the funeral? The orange one, Scootaloo, had been stabbed repeatedly. With Sweetie, the stitches suggest something had been forced through her head. But why would any pony do that? The third friend asked. I can't think of any pony in town who would do something that's sick. That's exactly what we're going to find out, the golden eyed unicorn said. And we're going to start by asking Princess Twilight. She must know something about all of this. I doubt she'll tell us anything, the fourth friend said. If Celestia wants to keep the news of a killer quiet, she'd have warned Twilight not to tell any pony. But that's just it, isn't it? The Gold Knight Unicorn said. Why would Celestia want to keep news of a killer quiet? Wouldn't she address the whole town to warn them of the danger? No, no. There's something bigger going on here. And we will find out what. And we're going to pay a visit to our local princess.